pretty quiet out here. Nothing but a woodpecker. I did these two rows last night, pruned them. It's just a swamp out there, though, still. Barely even walk. It's got to be the worst year for rain ever that I can remember. It's really putting a hamper in on doing anything on the farm, that's for sure. But we're halfway through February, and spring will be here before we know it, so we got to get some stuff done around here. Flipped this thing over last night too. Definitely somebody's been in here. New bolts, new nuts, random hardware. And it looks like there's a bearing down in there that actuates the uh the orbiting function. You really can't see in there. I'm gonna have to take it apart. Get my other one up here and take the bottom of it apart, but I don't think we're gonna get around to that today. You know, there's weather coming. You guys down south are going to get hammered all week. Hopefully you guys don't have to deal with floods and stuff. It sucks. But Mother Nature's fierce. She don't quit. But we'll get some stuff done this morning and then put a couple hours in on the farm and then we'll go beat the streets and see what we can find gotta make some money that's the only thing with farm work this time of the year doesn't put any money in your pocket but it helps maximize your profits later on in the year you know gotta put the time in alright One of the tree guys that we get mulch from, I guess, brought a load the other day when I wasn't here. But I want to try to get some mulch on these guys. Look at these deer prints. Huh. Little guys there. Anyway, these are a... Uh, this is a weed. But these plants, we just planted that one. This guy that one I think these are on there I don't know second this will be maybe maybe this will be their third summer that one that one that one it's really hard for me to spray around these things because they're so small the bigger plants they can can take it you know because they're not that little but you get to spray on these little shoots and it really messes them up so 
I'm going to try to get some of this spread out here today. I want to at least do this one end row that I can get with the truck. Because I have a trailer, it's kind of set up to do this, but it's not finished yet. And this little lawn tractor I got over here to pull it, I can't really do it by myself, so I need help. So I'm going to try to do what I can on that end row, maybe put some more on the blackberries over here. Because when that mulch is fresh, it's a lot easier to move around. So might as well do a little bit today before it starts raining all week again. Joy. Uh, let's see if the old Kubota will start. Oh, we got juice. Forgot to glow plug it. thing warm up Like I said, she ain't the ain't the fastest thing, but sure beats a shovel, right? Now if I can come up with a way to put it on here mechanically for cheap. Uh, one thing at a time, right?
well, I don't want to bore you guys. That's the gist of it. But like, you see, like here, where you got to get it over the over the crown, man. Because just like this, like, you see this grass here. If I miss that spot and I can't mow it, I have to spray it. And I'll tell you what, no matter how much mulch you put down, if you got one blade of grass sticking out through that mulch, it will come back every time. And I've had people help me over the years, spread it out here. And it's much appreciated, but no matter how many times you tell them, you know, Nobody really does the job as good as you're going to do it. It's just how it is in this world, right? So, sometimes you just got to do it yourself. Like, I got to come back and put some on that. And along here, right? To get the entire crown covered. Now, with the bigger bushes over there and the other rows, I got some little bushes scattered through here that we've filled this, filled this field out. This field's blue crops. And, uh, you know, the bigger bushes can handle being sprayed and being sprayed around as long as you don't hit the, the little shoots coming up. But these little bushes, man, they, they don't like it. You'll kill them in a heartbeat, that's for sure. All right. I'll come back when I get into something else. Probably going to take, like, I don't know, maybe three truckloads, four truckloads to get down here. I'm going to at least do this end row today. I want to get something done. I can't even get out here, you know. The fields are so soft, it's crazy. All right. Another thing I want to show you guys is like like this bush here. You see there's there's really no new shoots coming out of it. You know, it's got two stalks and they're way way too big. All right. Actually, you can still see the tag from when we planted it. <laughs> years ago right okay it's way way too big technically you should cut at least one of those branches off that way it will shoot out new shoots but this is the game that you play you know like you see you see this branch has some new shoots coming out and this is a uh, maybe a couple year old branch along with this one maybe two three but these are probably six years old right seven years old and technically, I should come in here and I should cut these out, right? But this is the gamble that you play because you play this, you know, do you do what's appropriate for the bush or do you do what's appropriate for your pocket? Because if I come in here and cut all these main stalks off, yes, it will be good for the bush and it will produce new shoots. But as you can see, these old branches are producing a lot of berries. And this field... Here is one of our blue crop fields and it, just this field right here. I don't know how many acres it is Probably two maybe but this field alone Probably produces about eight hundred to a thousand dollars worth of berries per season So do I come in here and, and cut all my profit away or do I you know or do I leave them and You know this is the this is the game that you got to play and it's it's very hard to judge what to do you know, like a lot of these branches, obviously this one's broke, so it can come off of there. But, you know, like here, you see all these new shoots, right? All the red shoots. I should come in here and cut all these big ones out. And I probably will. I'll probably not cut them all out. I'll probably come maybe trim about three of them off at the most. But technically, like this guy, look at all these big branches it has. They all need to come off. And then I have some bushes over here, which are just out of control right these ones i believe these are jerseys they're mixed in here but like look at this you know there's these bushes definitely need to be thinned we got a lot of broken ones there's probably about 60 percent of this bush can get cut out these ones here and these produce a lot of berries but they're real small because the bush is so big you know and it's putting all of its energy into too many berries so these, there's two, two or three rows here about halfway down that are jerseys. I believe they're jerseys. And, uh, these ones I'm definitely going to come in and cut like crazy this year. Like, just look at this one. You know, this thing's got, I don't even know what's in there. 30 of them maybe, right? And it probably should have six, you know? So, 
some of the stuff needs to be pruned heavily because we haven't been able to do it for so many years and like this one here you know it has one or two really young shoots here's another one over here that's really young and then all those ones with moss on them should come out but all those ones with moss are still producing berries so this is the gamble you know do you do what's right for the plant or do you do what's right for the bank you know like this guy i can take him out he's pretty much dead that'll come off that and hopefully those shoots will those shoots will come up but this is farming right it's crazy really and my grandfather my grandfather really didn't like cutting these bushes that's why they're so big because of the same reason it does you know it affects your pocket and it takes so long for these things to grow you know you're talking seven years before you can get any kind of substantial yield off them that's a that's a huge huge investment you know of time energy labor equipment fuel you know it's really a losing game that's why a lot of people don't do this anymore like look at this bush this bush got a lot of young growth in it so like i'll come in here and take all this all this old growth out because it has a ton of young growth in it but this one you know it's got three or four shoots that are new and then about three or four shoots that are old so what do you do and then this one all old shoots there's like one or two little stragglers of new ones you know it's crazy but this is the hand we're dealt right so until i get overwhelmed with it and decide to sell the place guess i'll just keep plugging away at it one bush at a time right like this guy he's got one big one he's got a couple young shoots coming up i believe this is actually a, uh, a berkeley bush there's a couple berkeley bushes over here on this end row and then the wee little guys hello i'm two years old i'll get there eventually oh look in five years i'll have some berries yay <laughs> all right oh man well get back to work shovel some more mulch one pitchfork at a time, right? I would call that normal. But that's just me. This, not so much. I don't know what's going on, but definitely something.